For this video, what I want to do is show you how to write the null and alternative hypotheses in symbol form. It's really important when you are doing hypothesis testing that you set up the null and the alternative hypothesis correctly. So we have a couple of statements here. I actually have three of them that I'm going to go through. The first one is that a car manufacturer claims that the new hybrid car they developed gets an average of 50 miles per gallon. Okay, so with this, the first thing that you want to do is figure out what symbol you want to use. And so since we're talking about the average, remember that is really the mean, and the mean um, of the population is mu. So in the null and the alternative hypotheses, we always use the population parameters. So in this case, we would use mu. Okay, we would try to change this into a statement. So they're saying that it gets an average of 50 miles per gallon, which means that they're saying that the mean is 50. Okay, so then when you set up your null and your alternative hypotheses, remember that the null always goes first and the alternative always goes second. And then you look to see, is this a statement of equality or a statement of inequality? So since this is a statement of equality, it would go in the null hypothesis. Equals always goes in the null. Some textbooks universally use um, equals in the null hypothesis, but some of them um, will use less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, or just equal to in the null. All right, so since we established that this is equals, we would put mu equals 50. You could also write it out in word form. The mean is, the population mean is 50 miles per gallon. That's also acceptable. I always like to identify that this is my claim so that later when I get to the end of my hypothesis test, I know how to interpret because there's different interpretations based on where the claim is. So the alternative is always the complement of the null hypothesis. So the null hypothesis is equal, so the complement of that would be not equals. And that's it. Um, the first null and alternative hypothesis are set up. So remember that equality always goes in the null. Um, inequality always goes in the alternative. And in other videos, I will address um, what kind of test, whether it's left tail, right tail, or two tail, based off of the hypotheses. All right, so our next one is that an ER claims that the mean wait time is less than 10 minutes. Okay, so again, since we're using mean, anytime it says mean or average, we're going to use mu, is less than always points to the left. So if you get confused by this, less than always points to the left because the values are always smaller to the left of that number. Okay, um, so the mean is less than 10. So our claim is that mu is less than 10. So now to set up the null and the alternative, we would look at our claim and decide, does it have equality, which means it would go in the null, or inequality, which means it goes in the alternative. And so since we have mu is less than 10, we would put this in the alternative, and we would establish that this is our claim. Okay, and then the opposite of that or the complement of, of less than is greater than or equal to. So like I said, an alternative, depending upon the textbook that you work with, some textbooks will only write equals in um, the null hypothesis and use the less than or the inequality statement in the alternative. And then other textbooks opt to do the opposite sign. The textbook I'm currently working from um, does the option on the left where it uses the greater than or equal to versus less than. All right, so one last example. The last one talks about a poll claims that at most 45% of voters agree with the new tax bill. Okay, so anytime that you see a percentage or it says the proportion, the parameter for this one is the population proportion. So P is what we use for the proportion or percent of a population. OK, 
Okay. So if it talks about the mean, we use mu. If it talks about the percent or the proportion of something, then we will use p when we are setting up our hypothesis. At most means that it has to be less than or equal to. At most means the highest that it can be is 45%. So our claim that we would establish is P is less than or equal to 0.45. So with proportions, we always put this as a decimal. We don't ever leave it in the percentage form. We write it as a decimal. So then when we go to set up our null and our alternative hypotheses, we look at if this is a statement or e of equality or inequality. And since our claim is that P is less than or equal to 0.45, we would say our claim is about the null hypothesis. The alternative is just the opposite. So we would say that P is greater than 0.45, okay? So when you're going through and setting up the hypotheses for a hypothesis test, it's really important that you know which symbols to use. Um, it's also important to know which um, so which symbols to use for the parameter, like population proportion, we use P. Um, and I'll just write them down for you. The mean, we use mu for the population. And these are known as parameters because they are numbers that are describing the population. And then another one that's commonly used is sigma squared, which is the variance. After you have established which of the three population parameter symbols that you are going to use, and there are other symbols um, and other tests out there, I'm just going over the most commonly used ones. Then you're going to figure out if your claim has a statement of equality, and if it is, then your claim is about the null hypothesis, or if it's a statement of inequality, then it's going to be a statement or a claim about the alternative hypothesis. So these symbols are very important that when you set this up, that you set it up correctly. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics you need me to cover, please let me know that as well.